is the day we are going to make over my 1980s fireplace into something so much more beautiful and something to love. And joining us is my husband, Matthew. So when we moved into our home, uh, you can see the fireplace has these deep grooves between the stones, and I don't really love that. It gives off a log cabin vibe, which is totally fine. It's just not what I wanted for our home. Matthew has no idea what I'm even talking about and actually fought me on this idea for quite a while. But in order to make this makeover you saw from the, the campfire kind of looking to the finished, almost European look, you need a few, a few items. Yep, you need mortar mix, a drill, sponge, mixing paddle, putty scraper, obviously a bucket, and a spray bottle. Yeah, and you like the results. Yeah. They're great. Yeah, they are good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you made it look like they did. <laughs> he does love it. So what you're going to do is you're going to clean your fireplace so well, and then you're going to grab soap and water. I just use Dawn dish soap and you're going to scrub it. Now here's the mortar mix. Now we used white mortar mix and if you add too much water to it, it'll be very runny like that. Now we're adding more and you can see we added a little bit too much and it's too thick. So the great thing about this, you can just water it down lightly. We are just using our hose and look at that pancake texture. That's what you want. So here I'm adding it into the stone fireplace wall and I'm taking a putty spatula and I'm just layering it in. However, remember the first scene with the mortar being too runny? That's what this is. Well, this is Matthew's behind, but he's trying to help me solve the issue and we're just kind of playing with it. You can see on the left, it is running. It's a little sad. And on the right side, you can see where it's much more stiff with that pancake kind of tacky, much thicker consistency. It's staying in the wall, which is exactly what you want to do. Here's a close up. So I'm taking that putty knife. I'm loading up that mortar, that thick pancake consistency. I'm going to keep saying that so you remember. And you're going to shove it into the groove. You don't want to leave air pockets. You want it to be completely packed. So you can see I'm taking it and I'm putting it in and then dragging it onto the rock. A lot of the rocks are way too small and they will be covered up. And that was completely okay with me. I'm only letting the high point shine. You're just, you're going to want to make sure that each and every groove has this white mortar because you're creating now a German schmear kind of looking dragged over look. And if you, if you kind of go light in some areas and heavier the others, it's not going to look as good. So you're, this looks like it's a lot of mortar, but it's actually not. This was only two full bags for this entire wall. Now, it doesn't look like it, but you're going to want to work in sections. And the reason why is because this putty spatula that I'm using to push this mortar into the grooves, it's so thick that it's going to dry and it's going to dry fast. That's fine because we're going to sand it later, but why not cut that sanding time in half by using a dampened sponge? And you can see on the upper right, those rigid points and on the bottom left where I've used a sponge and made it more smooth and how it's going to be more in the end. I am not using anything other than tepid or lukewarm water here. And this sponge is just an oversized, very inexpensive material to take those high ridges and just kind of smooth them out. And like I said, on the bottom left, you can see how it's smooth. And that's how you can smooth out how it actually goes on the surface of your rocks too. You can choose to cover more, you can choose to cover them less, but we are doing a lime wash after this as well. So us messing up in the beginning with that thinner mortar is to your benefit because you can see here that it has dried in that kind of runny state and I'm using an extremely high grit sandpaper to get rid of all those ridges and I'll go over the entire place to just kind of soften those ridges all over. I love in the last scene that I had a full on shower cap on and here I apparently don't care about all the dust, but you're going to want to sweep out all this dust and just vacuum it up. It's going to get everywhere, but I promise you it is well worth it. Bring out another sponge or the same one you had and make sure that you wash 
every single stone, every single crevice, even on the mortar once it has dried. This is just the very next day. The mortar will dry very fast. We are doing a lime wash by Roma Bio Paints, which is a Boreo white. If you are just at the point where you like this enough and you're done, congratulations. You have made it. You are done. Going with the in exact instructions that the Roma Bio Lime Wash comes in, it says to take the contents of the container and do a one-to-one -one ratio with the water. You can see it's kind of soupy and I'm going to pick it up here in a second and I'm going to work with that lime wash and just make sure it's dissolved completely. You're going to want to grab a spray bottle and you're going to want to work in smaller sections as per the instructions. And here's why. You need to dampen each space before you put the lime wash on. Now using a masonry brush, I just put on very generously the lime wash because I didn't know exactly if I wanted full coverage or not. But here's the best part, because after 20 minutes, you go back and you distress slash take off as much as you want or as little as you want. You can see in this angle that I'm not going after the entire fireplace in one setting. I'm going in a line from the very top because as I start to spray it, it's going to, you know, gravity is going to take over and take it down. But this allows me to have more control on my distressing. This lime wash is a fantastic coverage. So it just depends on how much or how little you want it to cover. So here I'm going back with my trigger bottle, my spray bottle, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using my <laughs> kitchen rag to go back and quote unquote distress it. And what I'm doing is removing it. Here's a view of Matthew and here's what he has to say. In the center of the frame, you can see a stone that's got full coverage lime wash on it. If you like that effect, you can leave it. If not, hit it with the trigger bottle and some water and a rag to get the finish that you want. That's right. And you don't even have to seal it. So at this point, you're done. So let's look back at that fireplace before. I didn't love it. And taking under $150, I was able to transform it completely into this with just mortar and some simple tools that you probably already have lying around. A huge thank you to Roma Bio. Thank you so much for partnering on this. I hope that we inspired you to take something in your house and make it into something you love. Make sure to like, subscribe, and even comment below. We'd love to answer any questions. Thank you.